Hey, I'm glad you can join me for another video. So today's video is going to be about forensics and taking a physical image of a hard drive. So I'm going to have used this uh, 32 gig drive. This is an SSD. It's some old drive that I had here. It's really just, it's not, not a real case. This is just uh, me uh, showing how a forensic imaging is done. Uh, before I get into this, uh, what forensic imaging is, is taking bit by bit copy of a set hard drive into either a target drive or a target drive as an image. With SSDs nowadays, unfortunately, we cannot buy an identical target drive, so um, we usually take uh, image or forensic image um, to a target drive. We don't have to match the size, we can buy a bigger drive, we can put multiple images on there, so it's just a binary image. And just to give you an idea of what a forensic image is, it's a, it's, a, it's a bit by bit copy, and then when imaging is finished, uh, we calculate hash values, MD5 or SHA-256, and it's like a long number that represents mathematical value uh, that you can then calculate against the forensic image, and you can say that, okay, this, this drive is identical. It's like, almost like a fingerprint. Uh, and then in court or in, in reports, if I write reports for, for a case, I can say I had a, I had a, a true bit-by-bit -bit copy by calculating this hash, and the hash verifies, and then this way you can say that this is the same as my image and uh, then we can proceed with the case. Anyways, enough of the talking, let's get to it. And by the amazing power of my graphical skills, I created this chart or this animation to show us that you take your evidence hard drive and then you run it through a forensic tool, some kind of imaging into a binary image or a target drive. So binary image can be E01, AFF4 or etc. There are many different kinds. And then uh, calculation, is, calculation happens near the end. This is just dramatization. And uh, you end up with a hash. Obviously, we don't use a calculator, but yeah. So I had to change the source drive. I had to use an 80 gig, SS, uh, 80 gig spinning drive because I ended up with a problem with the SSD. That SSD was like 12 years old, my first SSD. So uh, anyways, here's P3000. We turn on the right protect. And um, this is one way of doing drive to drive. So we go, you don't need a computer for this. You can just use the, the P3000 on its own. You choose your source drive. Then you choose your destination. You can make two copies if you want, but we only want one for now. And this will make copy drive to drive. We're gonna choose our, our uh, hashing algorithm. So we're gonna use MD5. The drives get powered on, tested, and imaging starts. And drive to drive is usually slower, especially on drives this old. With SSD, it's a lot quicker. As you can see, it's imaging here. Okay, it's almost done here. We're coming up to the end here. And it's done. Here's the hash. And the hash is written to the uh, unit itself. Um, we can then plug it into a computer. We can extract it. I'm going to show it further in the video how we get the... Uh, uh, the hash is out. Now we're just going to take it over to another computer where we can plug it in and get our uh, hash information. Okay, so here we are in my um, computer. I plugged in the P3000 um, to the USB port because what we want to get now is, since we did the forensic image and we have a copy now uh, of drive to drive, we want to get the hash values because uh, we have to put them in the report or for the lawyer, whatever, whatever is the purpose of the hash values for this particular case is we need to provide the hash values and the hash values I mentioned earlier the, the fingerprint. Uh, so they, these numbers represent a true copy of the original. So let's launch PC2000 Portable. And this is the easy version. This is the only way to get access to the logs that are stored in the device. Um, so you do that by going to settings. And here, drop all the way down and um, here are the hash values. 1856420 and ends, ends with 206. Ok, 
Okay, so next step is to um, um, we're gonna try now taking an image using a free tool, uh, something like Linux. I have my own custom built Linux machine that has, that has a, a write blocker built in by me. And this particular write blocker is um, works through SATA ports. So I can plug this drive in right now and we're gonna take an image. But this time, instead of going drive to drive, we're gonna go drive to um, as an image file. So let me do it right now. Okay, so here's the um, Linux computer. The drive has been plugged into a write blocker. Um, so we do have SATA access here in the drive. This is the same drive, it's an 80 gig uh, drive. So, <clears throat> so there are various tools you could use to image a hard drive in Linux. Um, um, one of the two most known is uh, DCFLDD and DC3DD. So we're gonna use DC3DD. And the command is DC3DD input file equals slash and we know this drive is slash dev slash sdd so dev slash sdd output file uh, i'm gonna go into the root of this folder wherever the uh, command is being run but you can point it wherever else you want it but since i'm in the folder that i want the data to be in uh that's what we're gonna run it into so gonna go forensic image and let's say this case number 001 dot bin and hash is md5 and log e is f image zero one dot txt Whoop. well forgot something suit it bang bang and it's going so you can see on the screen here in this folder we have the bin file that's being created and there's a text file. And you can see here the size is increasing. So I will let, let this run and I'm gonna come back and um, compare the hashes. Okay, so <clears throat> we're almost done here. Um, Linux is almost done imaging here and um, we can compare the, um, the results to um, PC3000 and see if I get the same hash. So if we got the same hash, that means the image is correct. And it's almost done here. And that will be it. So it's done here. It's showing 185 ending with 206. There's a text file that I created. So here's the complete hash. 185 206. That's where it ends it. 185 206. So this is the right image. So um, the imaging clearly worked well. <clears throat> now, if someone were to take this image uh, and had to re-examine this case themselves, because a, lo a lot of times it happens, uh, we'll do the examination and then another company will take over and take the case. Um, so the first thing they got to do is they have to run uh, through the image um, uh, some kind of hashing software, forensic software, whatever they use to check if the hash of this image is if it's the same as what we had. Now, if it isn't, then obviously we have a problem with the image. Um, so yeah, uh, usually after this is all done, I'll run my own hashing after this imaging is completed, just to compare. If, I, if, if I'm importing it into, uh, let's say, IEF, I would um, rehash it again just to compare the results, just to make sure my hashing is correct. And I'll put it in a report. I'll write the steps I took to get to where I did. So before I end this video, uh, I was also going to add to this um, to this video another form of imaging uh, using DeepStar Imager. This is it here, uh, but I've already covered this in another video. So um, if you go to our YouTube channel, uh, there's the video. Uh, it talks about the uh, different types of imagers uh, for forensics, including uh, DeepSpar. So if you want to watch uh, that video, it's it's uh, I'll link it below, or I'm gonna link it above. Um, the video here, uh, but yeah, this is a DeepStar Imager. Uh, on its own, it doesn't do forensic imaging, but you need to buy the Imager itself, which is right here. It's just a PCI Express card. And then you also need a forensic add-on. Well, we also have on ours, we have the uh, PCIe add-on, we have the USB add-on. Uh, this one here is free. Um, what else do we have? We have Network. And I think AT Extender, yeah, we have all that. So it, it's a good tool. Uh, it's not cheap, obviously. And none of these images are cheap. Uh, forensics um, uh, itself, 
all the equipment, all the software is really, really expensive. Uh, like Axiom itself is like ten thousand dollars, I think. I don't remember what it is now, but uh, there's also the uh, uh, monthly, uh, yearly fee you gotta pay uh, to use it for updates and all that stuff. But anyways, this is why forensic imaging is not cheap either, because we uh, we charge, you know, a fee to image a hard drive. We usually charge per gigabyte. So uh, if you scale up on the large hard drives, it can get very, very expensive. So um, so yeah, and also the last thing we have to do um, before we check, uh, before we finish this video, is we have to make sure that the image we've taken of the hard drive is uh, the hashes uh, match. So I'm gonna use some free um, hashing tool. I think this one's called Igorware. Uh, you can use any other hashing tool you want. Uh, so we can check for MD5 and we just hit calculate, and this will take uh, about 15 minutes. To load this 80 gig image, I mean, larger images will take long. I mean, if some images, if they're four terabytes or ten terabytes, you could be looking at hours, maybe a day, um, to hash it. So yeah, I'm gonna let this run, and when it's finished, uh, we're gonna come back here. And before I forget, um, there's few very important parts I've omitted in this video. So uh, when a hard drive comes in for the, for um, forensic imaging, number one is we take photos. We record all the information about a hard drive, a serial number. Um, everything that's on the drive, uh, if there's any markings, we record all that. Plus, we also start chain of custody and uh, we include that in the report. So, um, those are very, very important um, uh, things that you have to do when, when making a forensic copy because um, otherwise, uh, hash value on its own is it's not, it's not, it's not, uh, it's not, not enough. You need to have all that you know, all the other information. Anyways, this imaging is almost done. Sorry, this hashing is almost done. Um, so, if the image is, is fine, if the image matches the original hard drive, the hash should, should say M, uh, 206 at the end. Yep, 206, 185 at the beginning, 206 at the end. And this is the hash we had initially, so the image is correct. Anyways, that'll be it for this video. Uh, like, share, subscribe, all that stuff, all the YouTube, YouTube BS, uh, I guess I have to add to every video, apparently. Um, but yeah, I'll have another video coming up in the near future. Again, I'm not setting myself a crazy schedule to make these videos because it's, I'll, I'll never get anything done. Um, I have other jobs I gotta work on, so um, sometimes maybe in the next few weeks there'll be another video. Anyway, see you guys.